Hi, I'm Steve Selling, founder of FitTest, and in this video, I'm going to talk about ex cardiac rehabilitation for exercise professionals. In part one of this series, I'll talk about the exercise services that are effective within a cardiac rehab plan, the indications and contraindications for cardiac rehabilitation services, and I'll finish up with a case study. So the Cardiac Rehabilitation for Health Professionals was revised and published by the National Heart Foundation of Australia in 2019. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because you can easily get the resource online. But I do want to highlight what is in the red box here, and that is the strong recommendation from the National Heart Foundation of Australia in 2019 is that we need to be giving cardiac rehab participants a tailored, which means individualized, progressive and supervised exercise training program. So I think those three words are really important. Now as part of um, designing an exercise intervention, the Heart Foundation recommends that a symptom limited exercise test be performed either on a bicycle ergometer or on a treadmill. And that's exactly what my app Fit Test is designed to do. It's one of the many things it's designed to do, but it does that really well. Now, also, if feasible, you can look at peak exercise capacity uh, assessment, but that's not essential. Uh, in my own case, most of the time I'm conducting submaximal cycle ergometer or treadmill tests using my app Fit Test. So when we look at exercise capacity, we want to assess our clients for exercise tolerance. And from that, we can devise an individualized exercise prescription. Uh, we, we then complete this. The exercise prescription is then designed and communicated to both the client and the healthcare provider, the referrer. The beautiful thing about my app fit test is it's really easy to reassess my clients at the end of the either at the end or partway through a cardiac rehab program. And from that, we can, find, we can continually fine tune our exercise interventions that are really specific for that individual. So in summary, I'm totally in favor of a symptom limited exercise test at the beginning of the program and also progressing through uh, using a bicycle ergometer or a treadmill. And that's what FIT test is designed to do. So just not much on this um, slide, but just to show that there's really good evidence that by increasing participation to exercise, we can reduce hospital admissions and improve quality of life and obviously function. Notice I didn't use the word adherence. It's not really a word I like to use. I know it's in the guideline. I much prefer to that the client is an active participant in their health plan so we're, I replace adherence by increasing participation in exercise rather than adherence to exercise. So I just want to go over the cardiac rehabilitation services that are effective for patients with the following conditions. So coronary artery bypass graft or bypass surgery, percutaneous cardiac interventions, PCI, or most commonly known as stents, these can be emergency stents or elective stents. Uh, post myocardial infarction, in other words, after a heart attack, if the client is medically stable. Stable angina, so predictable chest pain that can be managed and treated. Controlled hypertension, which means uh, systolic blood pressure not going above, certainly not going above 250 with exercise but also that there's some evidence um, that the blood pressure at rest is under good control with medications and the level of systolic and diastolic pressure is satisfactory. You can get those, the actual numbers for these, uh, for the definition of controlled hypertension in most of the health authorities. Compensated heart failure, which means heart failure that is being treated and that is not being exacerbated either at rest or with exercise, and that the person, for example, fluid balance is under control, and that they've got um, reasonable uh, heart function 
under the under the care of medications. Peripheral vascular disease, congenital cardiac conditions. Now, often with congenital cardiac conditions, certainly in my case, I see the, the client well after they've had their surgery. Um, in fact, they've, they've recovered from surgery is when I see them. But this could be even pre-surgical as well. Heart and heart-lung transplants. Cardiomyopathies, but we do need to have caution with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or HCM. All sorts of valve disease, including especially the big one, aortic stenosis. And I'm going to actually provide a couple of presentations later in this series on aortic stenosis. It's a very interesting disease and exercise professionals can work really well, both before and after surgeries and other interventions with people who have aortic stenosis. Valve replacements. Most arrhythmias can be dealt with successfully under cardiac rehab conditions, especially atrial fibrillation, supraventricular tachys, even uh, ventricular tachys as well. Uh, pacemakers, permanent pacemakers and implantable cardioverted defibrillators or ICDs and also event recorders. And I guess the big one, survivors of cardiac arrest who will often have an ICD implanted after surviving a cardiac arrest. Now the sort of patients that wear cardiac rehab services, I'm talking about exercise services, they're contraindicated for patients with severe residual angina and especially unstable angina. I mean, this is an acute hospital situation, not suitable for exercise. Decompensated heart failure, which means that the heart is now failed to such an extent that it is, um, has very high filling volumes and very poor stroke volume performance. Uncontrolled arrhythmias, I won't go through them here. Severe conduction defects such as third degree AV nodal block. Severe ischemia, LV dysfunction or arrhythmias during exercise testing. Poorly controlled systemic or pulmonary hypertension that might be exposed at rest, but could also be exposed during exercise. I need to add though that pulmonary hypertension is not something that, a nor that could normally be either um, viewed or measured or really dealt, dealt with in any way by an exercise professional in the, more, in the most common exercise settings. Excessive hypertensive or hypotensive response to exercise. You can get these guidelines in by, uh, from most of the health authorities. Unstable diabetes, diabetes prone to hyperglycemia, ongoing febrile illness, and active transplant rejection. So now I go to my case study of a 54 year old female with a history of ischemic, severe ischemic heart disease and, and also peripheral arterial disease in many parts of her body. She had undergone cabbage or coronary artery bypass graft and she had previous uh, myocardial infarction as well. I'm not gonna go through all of her conditions, just the ones in red. So she's had obesity for a long time, hypertension for a long time, um, myocardial infarction previously in 2010, mild aortic stenosis with a pressure gradient across the aortic valve of 25 mils of mercury. As I said, I will um, present uh, um, another uh, series, small series of uh, videos on aortic stenosis and how you can deal with that as an exercise professional. So I'm not gonna talk about it here. Um, she's also got low ankle uh, brachial index indicative of peripheral arterial disease, um, transient ischemic attack, and she's had stents in many arteries, including the renal and the common iliac. Um, and she's had bilateral common carotid stenosis, so some atherosclerosis in the carotids. And more recently, uh, cabbage for three arteries, coronary artery bypass graft for three arteries. So the medications, and again, I'll just go over the red ones, uh, the, the, the heart ones. So CARTI was an antiplatelet. Clobidogrel was, was used uh, post-stent, uh, also known as Plavix. Um, by the way, CARTI is an aspirin-like drug. Now, the two of these together, the two antiplatelets together, 
are known uh, as dual antiplatelet therapy or DAPT. And this is often given for one to two years post stenting, which I showed you on the previous slide. Uh, she's on a, a high dose statin and um, an angiotensin receptor blocker called Omnisartan. Anything ending in sartan is an ARB, and anything ending in PINE, PIN, lecanitidipine, or xanadip is a calcium channel antagonist. So, just to go over her pre exercise findings, she's a, a big woman at a, nearly 100 kilograms, height 163, heart rate rest 87. So she's not taking a beta blocker, hence these heart rates are a little higher. Uh, probably had some white coat effect in there. Blood pressure well managed at 132 on this occasion, but not always, as you will see. So we first performed a six minute walk test and I did that because she was so disabled. It was not my preferred test, but she was so disabled and she was only able to cover 175 meters in total over the six minutes, which is a very small distance. And that even required a 30 second rest halfway through. And this is equivalent to 1.75 kilometers per hour compared to what she was able to achieve later, which was four kilometers an hour on the 29th of um, September. So on that 29th of September in the same year, which wasn't really just a month and a half later, we got dramatic improvements. So six weeks, we got dramatic improvements. Uh, heart rate peak is 87%. So again, because of not taking a beta blocker, this was, you know, got quite high, uh, high percentage of heart rate peak, age predicted heart rate peak. Uh, VO2 peak was 20.1, which is um, fair for age uh, peers, but much higher than what would have been predicted for the six minute walk test. The blood pressure peak was, was reasonable, um, normal rise with blood pressure, and she reached four kilometers an hour and 6% on the treadmill using my app fit test. So we then got on to tra into training and twice a week with an accredited exercise physiologist and five times per week self-administered. And she was a wonderful client in the sense that she was highly motivated to turn this around. We commenced with just corridor walking and progressed to treadmill walking, which she did very, very well. And so on the treadmill, we eventually got to three kilometers an hour warm up for a minute, moving to four kilometers. And then she was able to switch it up to five kilometers an hour for 10 minutes of walking on the treadmill. We then gradually added some incline and her lower leg pain arose at about eight minutes of walking at five kilometers per hour. And we encouraged her to, to walk through that until the pain became intolerable. Um, she was scheduled for a right calf stent based on previous angiography and symptoms. They, so she went and was booked in for the stent. And what the angiography just before the stent showed that she no longer needed the stent because she had actually sprouted some new arteries. And this really went along with her uh, improvement in symptoms when she was on the treadmill. So she actually got up and went home, which was a wonderful result. Um, however, we do have some issues with her blood pressure. She does present frequently, and this is not white coat hypertension. She presents frequently with 160 over 100 or even higher. And we use a post-exercise hypotension manoeuvre, which I've described on another video on my channel, which you can find, post-exercise hypotension so we use a moderate intensity burst of exercise followed by five minutes or longer of passive rest. And this can get her blood pressure down really nicely before we then undergo the rest of the exercise training session. And so that she frequently leaves 60 minutes later with a, with a very good blood pressure. So just some useful resources there. You may want to pause this slide just to check out some of these resources and follow them up. That's all I really wanted to say, and I hope you continue to enjoy Fit Test and my YouTube channel. You can contact me at info at myfitness.com.au. Have a great day and bye for now.